grass is an excellent material to uh, to start a fire, but um, I'm afraid I'll have my problems with this one because it's soaking wet. But uh, I'll give it a go anyway. The, the grass is so wet. I will uh, see if I can find something to um, expand the lifetime of the coal. And uh, there's a beech and oak forest a few hundred meters this way. And I'll see if I can find some some punk wood or something. Soaking wet. Um, maybe I can find a uh, fungus down here. Just have some uh, huge birds flying. There's a uh, huge bird's nest up there. Green woodpecker has uh, been working here, and um, yeah, it's it's not the best. I don't feel dry, so um, yeah, we'll keep searching, or we'll have to do without. The best I have found. Um, it's a bit moist, but um, we'll see if it works. Just found this um, horseshoe from the the Amadoule is uh, it's very good. It might be uh, soaking wet, but uh, we'll have a go at it. Yeah, and that is uh, horse hoof fungus, not horseshoe fungus. Uh, sorry.
the most important thing when making a friction fire is to have dry material. And uh, this is uh, dead steadening Norwegian spruce. So uh, how do I know it's dead? Because there's very little bark on it. And uh, that bark that is left is completely dry. And there are no needles on it. Um, if the wood is laying down on the ground, the dry wood will suck the moist from the, from the ground. And uh, it's definitely not recommendable, especially here in Denmark where it's moist uh, most of the year. The grass is still very wet, but um, hopefully the wind will do the rest. ways to find out if uh, something is wet or dry is to press it against your lower lip and it's one of the most sensitive places on your body and uh, if it's wet it uh, it feels cold and if it's dry it's just like the surroundings I always carve my uh, spindle in uh, about thumb thickness. If you carve it thicker than that, um, you have to put more pressure on it. If you carve it thinner, you don't have to pressure so much. But uh, the disadvantages of making it thinner is that the string might slide around the, the, the spindle instead of uh, rotating the spindle.
the board again thumb thickness you don't want it too thin then you might not have enough uh, material and you will just uh, drill through it and if it's too thick um, it could take longer to uh, to warm the water up so thumb thickness Spruce roots are very strong, very good for cordage. Um, but like anything else that is uh, good for cordage, if you split it and uh, twist it two ply with earth wrap, it will become much stronger. Mm. So when it becomes too thick on one side, you press the thick end down, give it tension, and it'll straighten up. I started making it thin, but uh, it went way too slow, so uh, I applied some more and uh, made it thicker. Yeah, I just uh, broke it. I was stretching it and um, well, it had a weak spot, um, but better now than, uh, than later. I would just tie it together and um, use this end to, to tie the string. Shit happens.
as a handle where we don't want any friction. Um, it's good to use a fresh piece of wood. Again, I don't want the, the board to suck up the moist from the underground, so I'm laying a piece of wood beneath it, and uh, I'll use that to uh, collect the coal as well. Now, as a bow, I prefer a, a dead branch, slightly curved, uh, and the reason I prefer a dead branch is that it's stiffer, and um, because it's lighter than a, than a fresh ball. I want the uh, uh, spindle to be on the outside of the string, so I'll put it up on the inside and twist it around like this. I like to have my spindle uh, the height to my, uh, just below my knee, because that way I can I can lock it in place here with my wrist and push at the same time. Now I'm just taking it slow. I'm just warming the, the ball up. Using the, the whole length of the bow. I'm having a problem, it won't it won't bite. So a thing you can do is take a couple of grains of sand, put it in the hole. It creates resistance and will grind. the knots and uh, no reason to throw out the dust. The more the dust, the bigger the coal.
Now, uh, a rule of thumb is that um, you carve out one eighth of the pie, and um, you don't want it to get smaller or narrower closer to the bottom because the coal can get stuck. So um, keep it straight or slightly uh, expanded at the bottom. Just tied the string again because when I when you when you use it, it becomes uh, stretched and uh, and uh, and looser. So it's a good thing before you you're going to make the coal that you that you tie it up again. Take it up slowly. Now a lot of people and they're just Starting to make gold drills, friction fire. They, they rush to take the coal in the, in the bird's nest. But um, if you do that, all the dust will just uh, fall in between the, the grass. Um, now let's see how the grass is going. <laughs> A lot of the grass is laying on the ground now, so hopefully that's a good sign. Yeah, it feels okay. Feels okay, but uh, there's not so much of it anymore. It's a little burst nest. I forgot about the Amadou. Oh, and the... <laughs> have my punk wood. Oh. See if it works. This is the this is the Amadou layer. That's what you use to the flint and steel. Um, fly fishers, if they fish with uh, dry fly, this layer uh, can be used to suck the moisture out of the out of the fly, so it won't sink. But uh, it's too wet. What works? Yeah. Okay, we'll try. I'm 
take it into the into the nest and pull it up slowly so it won't get spread too much. And then I press it firmly and I have uh, space between my fingers so the, the air can get in between. Okay, it's working. 